Tupolev Tu-160, the Soviet White Swan. In the 1960s, the Soviet Union developed strategic missile weapons, while the United States relied on strategic aviation. The policy pursued by Nikita Khrushchev led to the fact that by the early 1970s, the USSR had a powerful nuclear missile deterrent system, but strategic aviation had at its disposal only Tu-95 and M4 subsonic bombers. However, these aircrafts were unable to overcome American air defense systems. To establish and secure the USSR's geopolitical interests during Cold War, Soviet leadership dramatically increased the technological capabilities of the Soviet armed forces. Most of the improvements were directed towards the operation of strategic nuclear weapons, such as the Typhoon-class submarine and the Tu-160 bomber, NATO reporting name Blackjack. Everything started in 1972. The Soviet Union launched a new multi-mission bomber competition to create a new supersonic heavy bomber, exceeding the speed of sound beyond Mach 2, in response to the US Air Force B-1 project. Several project versions were rejected, and a highly controversial contest involving some of the Soviet Union's top-class aircraft design companies took place before the Tu-160 variable geometry bomber reached the hardware stage. Its design made use of many advanced features, not used previously on Soviet bombers. The airframe structure is based on a titanium beam, all welded torsion box. Throughout the entire airframe, all the main airframe members are secured to the titanium beam. The variable geometry outer tapered wings sweep back from 20 degrees to 65 degrees in order to provide high performance flight characteristics at supersonic and subsonic speeds. The tail surfaces, horizontal and vertical, are one piece and all moving. Also uses fly-by-wire controls. Tupolev company named their winning Concept 160M with a lengthened blended wing layout and incorporating some elements of the legendary Tu-144. And in the same year, the design was accepted by the Soviet government committee and officially in 1981, Tupolev made its maiden flight. Three months later, the first supersonic flight was achieved. And during one of the test flights, the top speed of 2200 kilometers per hour was reached. Finally, in April 1987, Tupolev entered service, and aircrafts were based at Priluki Military Air Base in Ukraine. Everything has changed in 1991. The Soviet Union collapsed. The former Soviet Union had to deal with a number of unique obstacles during the post-Soviet transition, including political reform, economic restructuring, and the redrawing of political boundaries. In January 1992, Russian President Boris Yeltsin decided to stop the Tu-160 serial production, with 35 aircraft being built at the time. Russia has also unilaterally suspended flights of strategic aviation in remote regions of the world. The immediate outcome of the fall of the Soviet Union was the increase of the United States' influence as a major global power. A total of 19 Tu-160s were stationed inside the newly independent Ukraine during the dissolution of the Soviet Union, where they were effectively grounded due to a lack of technical support, spare parts, and their high operational costs. Later in 1998, due to the stalled negotiations with Russian Federation, Ukraine decided to commence scrapping the aircrafts under the Nun-Lugar Cooperative Threat Reduction Agreement. Plane scrapping was conducted with the U.S. support that provided necessary financial resources. Already on November 16, 1998, Ukraine began to fulfill the contract, scrapping two Tu-160s with tail numbers 24 and 14. There's an interesting fact. The aircraft with tail number 14 was almost brand new and had less than 100 flying hours. Everything has changed in April 1999. Immediately after NATO's bombing of Yugoslavia, Russia resumed talks with Ukraine about strategic bombers, proposing to purchase either of their Tu-160 manufactured in 1991 those in the best technical condition, as well as 575 cruise missiles. An agreement was reached, and a 285 million US dollar contract was signed, the value of which was deducted from Ukraine's debt for natural gas. Later in this year, Russian military experts went to Ukraine to prepare the aircraft for the flight to Strategic Bomber Military Air Base in Russia Ingalls II. Production has since restarted, and a Tu-160 was delivered to the Russian Air Force in May 2000. A total of 36 aircraft were built, with only 16 currently in service in Russia. It was the last strategic bomber designed by the Soviets. 
The Blackjack is outwardly somewhat similar to the American B-1 bomber, which spurred its development. Both have variable sweep wings. Both are supersonic. However, that's where the similarities end. The B-1 is somewhat smaller and is a bomber in the classic sense. Tupolev, on the other hand, is used more as a standoff weapons platform in which missiles are launched from the bomb bay doors, while the White Swan would speed off at Mach 2 plus to safety. Weapons are carried in two internal bays, each capable of holding 20,000 kilograms of free-fall weapons or a rotary launcher for nuclear missiles. Also, additional missiles may be carried externally. It's the only Soviet-designed bomber that does not carry any defensive weapons. Initially, a traditional self-defense system was proposed for the aircraft, including a tail turret with a 30mm cannon. However, the designer replaced the plans later during development with the Baikal system. Also, the plans for medium-range air-to-air missiles were abandoned. Another noticeable difference is that the B-1's color scheme is usually subdued dark gray to reduce visibility. The Tu-160 is painted with anti-flash white, giving it the nickname among Russian airmen White Swan. And this brilliantly white reflective coating is protection for the crew. The Tupolev can carry a nuclear payload, which obviously creates a massive bright fireball. The thermal energy of nuclear explosions is so enormous, and by reflecting some of that thermal energy, such as light, the crew is at least in theory somewhat more protected than otherwise. One of the serious drawbacks is the fact that it is not stealthy. Nevertheless, Russians claim that Tu-60s managed to penetrate the U.S. sector of the Arctic undetected on 25th of April 2006, leading to a U.S. Air Force investigation, according to a Russian source. On the other hand, stealth technology is complicated and expensive. Russia's only stealth aircraft, the Su-57, has had myriad teething problems and is unlikely to enter full serial production anytime soon, due to many issues. The low cost of oil, upon which the wobbly Russian defense budget depends, and engine issues that may be difficult to rectify anytime soon. The legendary aircraft has amazing operational history and holds a total of 44 world records. The last one is from September 19, 2020. A pair of Tu-160 supersonic bombers set a new world record for the longest non-stop flight for that type of aircraft, with both crews in the air for more than a full day. The pilots were in the air for more than 25 hours, covering a distance of more than 20,000 kilometers. They flew over the neutral waters of the central part of the Arctic and Pacific Oceans, as well as the Kara, Loptev, East Siberia, Chukchi, and Barents Seas. The aircraft were refueled mid-air three times from six IL-78 tankers. Russia committed strategic bombers into combat over Syria, both for political signaling and testing purposes, as well as to surge volumes of firepower against static targets it could not ordinarily achieve particularly in eastern Syria. On the 17th of November 2015, several Tu-160 strategic bombers of the Russian Air Force carried out airstrikes in Idlib and Aleppo provinces using the KH-101 air-launched cruise missiles fired from the Mediterranean. In total, 34 cruise missiles were fired, destroying 14 important targets. This also marked the combat debut for the White Swan. The Tu-160 story is not over yet since Russia is now resuming production of the type to bolster its strategic potential. The Russian Ministry of Defense declared it was resuming production of the Tu-160. Specifically, it would purchase 50 modernized Tu-160M2 versions. Reportedly, the Tu-160M2 has the same airframe as the original aircraft, but will feature low observable coatings, completely new avionics, new, more powerful and efficient engines giving it greater operational range, and it will also have a new defensive system, protecting it from missiles. According to Deputy Defense Minister Yuri Borisov, the combat effectiveness of the aircraft will be 2.5 times higher than that of its predecessor. Necessary to say that it's a significant contract for UAC subsidiary Tupolev. The cost of this first contract stands at 160 billion rubles, nearly 2.8 billion US dollars, and stipulates delivery of the first Tu-160M2 by 2023. Delivery of the final bomber in the first buy, according to the contract, is slated for 2027. But relaunching production requires a significant investment, 37 billion rubles.